All right, everybody. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today on MLA Move Language Ahead's Kitchen episode. Um, I'm going to be doing double duty today. So I'm both hosting and I've got my computer here. And then I'm also cooking uh, with my mom, who is our guest chef today. So we've just obviously had Mother's Day, which I think we celebrate worldwide this past Sunday. So we took this opportunity for me to come back to my childhood home where I was raised. And this is in Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, Bel Air, Maryland is just north of Baltimore. Um, it's on the east coast of the United States. And it's really famous for an area called the Chesapeake Bay. Um, it's a body of water that kind of goes right through the middle of the state. So we have the pleasure of getting really excellent seafood. Um, so growing up, some of my memories were having really awesome seafood dishes. Um, and this is one of our favorite family recipes uh, that we always cook. Uh, it's great for uh, a luncheon. It's great for a brunch. You can have it for dinner really anytime. Um, it's really decadent and rich, but it's really easy to make. So we're really happy to be doing this today. Let me introduce my mom. This is Judy. Hi. So you can tell this is where I get my good looks from. Uh, and I get half of my cooking skills uh, from her. <laughs> the other half of my cooking skills comes from my father. He's an excellent cook. And uh, maybe when Father's Day approaches in June, you'll get a chance to meet him um, as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and I'm going to start with the ingredients today. So I will put them up on the screen so you guys can see that. All right, so cooking today for the quiche, we're gonna need four ounces of Swiss cheese uh, shredded. That equates to one cup. Now, if you don't have Swiss cheese, you can also use something like Gruyere. Um, you just want something that's got like a little bit of a punch to it. You know, you're gonna want it to go well with the, uh, the crab. You typically don't use cheese and seafood together, um, but in this recipe, it comes together really well. So that's four ounces or one cup of Swiss cheese. We're gonna be using one nine inch uh, pastry shell. Now we're gonna be making our pastry shell this morning from scratch. My mom is gonna do that in just a minute, but it's totally okay to go to the store and get yourself an unbaked pastry shell from the refrigerated or the freezer section um, to be able to use this. The star of our dish today is going to be our crab meat. Now we are using local crab meat. It's a, from a crab, it's a Maryland blue crab, uh, which I'll explain a little bit later. And that's gonna be drained and flaked, so you have it in small pieces. Um, a great substitute for the crab meat would be some uh, shrimp. So cooked shrimp could substitute out very easily uh, for the crab meat if you don't have the possibility of doing crab. Uh, canned crab meat is fine as well. Um, just wanna get a good quality uh, seafood for the dish. We're gonna use two green onions and we're gonna use both the white of the green onion and the greens. We're gonna slice them nice and thin. We're gonna use three whole eggs today. We're gonna be using uh, one cup of light cream a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of the zest of a lemon or the lemon peel grated, a quarter teaspoon of the dry mustard, which is a great spice, a lot of that used in Maryland, and then a quarter cup of sliced almonds. We're gonna finish up with a, a pinch of mace, uh, mace coming from the steaming of the cardamom, which again is another really great spice. It's gonna give it a really nice uh, flavor and aroma to that. So that's the recipe for that today. So let me go ahead and bring it back so you can see us in the kitchen and we'll get started. I'll turn it over to my mom and she'll start with our, uh, our pastry crust today. Okay, we're going to make a homemade pastry crust that was actually taught to me by my grandmother when I was a little kid. And um, so that's what I usually use when I do a homemade um, pie from scratch. And I use her recipe that has been handwritten down. So we're gonna start with one and a half cups of sifted all-purpose flour, which we've already sifted. That's in the bowl. And, and this is the general flour, not the self-rising flour that we've used in some of those other recipes. So general flour, all-purpose flour um, is what we're gonna to use today. And then we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt, regular salt, into that. And I just usually mix it up enough that it gets through the flour. And then a half a cup of shortening. So we use a Crisco shortening. So shortening is the fat. So you could use lard in this, you could also use butter. Okay, so the same quantities that you're gonna to wanna to use um, for that. So um, that's a quarter cup of the, uh, the Crisco, but like I said, you could also use that with butter. So you wanna use um, melted butter inside of that would work as well. 
Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to cut the shortening into your flour and salt mixture. So you cut it in and you just continue to do this until it comes up to small peas. So this is something that my mom had to teach me was how to cut the, uh, the Crisco into the flour. So you could use this with like a large fork, um, but the best way that we found to do this is taking two knives and crossing the knives. So you're crossing the knives to break up the fat into the flour, and you're gonna get these little like pea size or olive size bits. So it's gonna be a little bit of fat coated with that all purpose flour. And that's what's gonna give your pastry crust a delicious flaky uh, texture. So that's what we're gonna do there. So, while she's finishing that up, I'm going to teach you a little bit about the crab. So this is the star of the dish that I said. This is going to be Maryland blue crab. It's got these beautiful kind of flaky pieces on here. When you buy Maryland crab uh, inside of the grocery store, it's already cooked. So that's not raw crab. So let me just explain a little bit. I'm going to show you a slide here on the computer of exactly what a Maryland crab is. So here's Maryland. So if you see Maryland, which is the state there in red, you can see that there's that body of water that goes right up the middle of our state. That's why we are so lucky to get this beautiful seafood uh, from where we are. And this is a Maryland blue crab. So if you look at the picture on the top of the screen there, you can see that these crabs, they're, let's see, um, I guess they're about the size of like a cheeseburger, maybe a large cheeseburger, or, um, you know, a slice of New York style pizza. So that's the size of one of these Maryland blue crabs. And they have this beautiful blue color uh, on their claws and on their shell. The best way to prepare them is to steam them. So you steam them with water. And then when you steam them, the, the crab will turn that beautiful red color, almost like you would imagine a lobster to be. And that's when you're going to get Maryland blue crab. Now you pick those crabs, and when you pick the meat inside of those crabs, that's where you're going to end up with this beautiful, flaky, really delicate uh, meat. And it's got this really nice texture that's already cooked and flaked. And that's what we're going to be using in the dish today. Now, if you're not lucky enough to be able to use crab meat inside of this, again, um, you want to use shrimp and you want to use cooked shrimp. So make sure that you're buying like some, some cooked shrimp. You can easily substitute that in uh, for the crab in today's dish. Um, but of course, in Maryland, you'll have to use the crab. All right, so here we go, back okay. to the dough. So we have this into the small peas, and now I'm sprinkling over cold water by the tablespoon. So you'll use somewhere between four and five. I've just put two on there. And now you start to mix it with your hands and try to get it so that it gets into a ball. So you'll start to feel it come together and you try to get it all mixed in there and then you just keep sprinkling over one tablespoon at a time until it gets to that consistency of a ball. So we've just done three right now. All right, we have a question coming in right now from uh, Glorietta. Hi, Glorietta, if you unmute the microphone, we can hear you. Nope, I don't, Glorietta, just go ahead and unmute that microphone for us. All right, doesn't look like we have her with us today, but if anybody else has a question, don't forget, go ahead and raise that hand uh, and we'll be able to get you on here. We can also go ahead and, um, go through the chat. It's a little hard for me to read the chat because I'm doing double duty, uh, computer and cooking today, but we'll do our best. So this work gets a little messy, but I am just at my fifth. You can start to see how it's making a ball. And so hopefully. Now mom is a traditionalist. She likes to make things from scratch and I respect that. But if you're in a hurry, it's really okay just to buy that, that uh, refrigerated pastry crust. Um, that it's really easy to find, and you can easily use that as a substitute. Um, but making this is pretty easy. We, we cheat here, too. If you open that refrigerator door, we have a couple of those boxes, too. All right, it looks like I'm going to need one more. We're almost there. All right, let's see if we have any. And don't forget, too, guys, we're going to be setting out the full recipe. So you're going to get all of the ingredients, you're going to get all of the quantities, and all of the instructions. 
That'll come to you by email at the end of our webinar today. So don't worry if you missed the screen with the ingredients, um, if you don't hear us with the measurements today, because that full recipe comes to you uh, just after today's webinar. All right. So we have our ball. There we go. And now what we want to do is we want to roll it onto our surface. You can use a large cutting board. I have a pastry sheet that I use. And I just lightly spread it with a little bit more flour. And then you also want to take a little flour and put it onto your rolling pin. And then I'll put this in the center. You can already see how like flaky it is. So you can already see like the flakes of that. Uh, that a little juice. bit of flour on it so that you keep everything from sticking. And then you start to roll from the center out, from the center out, all the way around. All right. So mom is going to go ahead and she's going to finish going in and rolling out that pastry dough. In the meantime, I'm going to start by preparing our filling uh, for what's going to go inside of our quiche. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with um, three eggs. So we have three eggs inside of these. These are the whole eggs. So we want both the whites and the yolks that are going to be inside of there. And then to that, I'm going to add one cup of light cream. Just use regular cream. Uh, for this, but if you can find the light cream, that's the best. One cup of light cream into my three eggs. Okay, perfect. Now to that, I'm going to add our dry spices. So our dry spices, again, we're going to be using that dry mustard. Okay, uh, we're going to be using a little bit of salt and then just a dash of mix. All right, the quantities are one half teaspoon of salt. We're going to use one quarter teaspoon of the dry mustard powder. And then we're going to be using just a dash of the mace, which again is from the cardamom, which is going to be a beautiful, it's got that great floral aroma to it, and it'll make it taste really delicious. So we go ahead with that inside uh, of our wet ingredients there. And we're also going to use just a little bit of the zest of a lemon. So we're going to use the, the peel of the lemon. That's going to give it that great acid. It's going to give it a beautiful uh, lemon bite to it, a little citrus inside. That goes into our egg. How's the dough coming along? I think we're just about ready. All right, looks good. And me too. So here we go. We're going to take the whisk now and we're going to whisk this uh, into the mixture here. So we're whisking the egg, we're whisking the light cream. We've got that dry mustard, we've got the mace, a little bit of salt, and don't forget the lemon zest. I think lemon zest is like a key to all great dishes. I think it just adds that really great flavor and great smell too with all those oils. All right, so here you go. You've got like a great like um, kind of golden color there with the eggs. You might say it looks like pancake batter, but that's another episode. So here we go. So that's all done. And now we'll go ahead and put this pie crust into and our And now dish. what we're gonna do is we fold it over. Some people roll it on a rolling pin, but as Nana Cook or Carson called her Gigi, she used to fold it over like this. We're gonna move this out of the way. And I use a traditional quiche dish, but you can use a pie plate. You can use, as Carson said, a metal pie plate, a pre-made crust, however way is easy for you. This actually, this quiche dish came from my mother. And then you unfold it into your quiche dish. And you wanna just press the sides Especially in a quiche dish, you get that really nice fluted look when you're cutting it and presenting it. So it really makes a nice presentation. It's such an easy dish, but it looks like a million bucks. Like it looks so nice uh, when it's all done. As Carson said, it's great for like a ladies luncheon, um, but because the crab's in it, you know, it's an appeal to men too. And then some of this you wanna cut off a little bit, a little bit too much on the edges. And then you just want to kind of get it in there so that it makes a nice little presentation on the edge. Fold it over a little bit. All right, let's see if there's any questions on the chat. 
difficult to be on a diet, Stefania. Yeah, none of our cooking episodes are meant for you to be on a diet. And I don't think that this time in our lives, we have to focus on our diets. So I think we need to focus on just being happy and being with our family and friends. Uh, but that's a good point. But let uh, me answer that too. Yeah. You can use um, egg beaters. So you, you wouldn't have to use full whole eggs if you didn't want to. Um, I make a lot of quiche dishes without a crust. So as long as there's enough egg in there to hold everything together, you could probably get away with doing this without a crust. You'd have to experiment. This one I haven't ever done. And you would need to grease the uh, pie plate if you wanted to forego the crust. And we use Swiss cheese, which is, and you can get a low fat Swiss cheese. Um, so again, there's some, additions that you can make to make it a little bit more healthier. All right, so here we go. So there is our uh, pie crust inside of our quiche dish. Beautiful homemade. You can even see the little bits of the fat kind of running throughout the dough, which is what you know is going to be really good. All right, and then we're going to bring up our, our different ingredients. We're going to start to assemble here. We're going to assemble first with the, the shredded cheese, and you just put that on the bottom. So that's shredded Swiss cheese, okay? And um, that can also be, so it's four ounces, it's one cup, uh, but you could use Gruyere. Like I said, would be the perfect substitute if you can't find a Swiss cheese. Um, and if you can't find it grated, you just grate your own cheese, obviously. So that you just spread it around with your hands and then you also take your crab. It calls for seven and a half ounces, which is just a little under a cup. A lot of times I get a little bit more generous with it, so I usually do about a cup and then a little extra, a little extra half a handful on it. Yeah, if you're from Maryland, you know about crabs. I hope you guys have an opportunity to come. Actually, our program in New York, Ramapo, uh, if you take the Washington mini break, you get to spend the night in Baltimore, um, and you get to go right near the harbor and you might have the opportunity to have a crab dish. We're also famous for crab cakes. It's basically like a burger, but it's made all out of this crab meat. We call them crab cakes. Um, the traditional way to eat the crab is just steamed with a little bit of seasoning on top, like a Cajun seasoning. We call it Old Bay. And um, you would sit out back with your friends and families on a beautiful summer day. You would have a, the table filled with all of those uh, beautiful steamed crabs and then you would just drink some cold beer and you would pick those crabs. Um, that's how Marylanders go in the summertime. Uh, but here's another fabulous way. So now we've done it with the, with the um, crab and we've spread that around so that it covers the top of it. And I will say too, that make sure when you get your crab, if you're using crab, you have to pick through it with your hands to make sure that there isn't little shells in it. Because sometimes there is. If those get baked in it, they come a little white and a little crunchy. They won't hurt you. But it's always nice when you get a nice grade of crab so that you don't have those shells that just make sure there isn't any in there. And then we sprinkle it with the chopped green onion. So green onion, we're using both the white and the green part. Two green onions uh, sliced up on there going on top of the dish. So that gives color and flavor to it. So it makes it pretty, but it also tastes really good. And green onions aren't strong. So it's a nice flavor and it complements it very well. So there is for the green onion on the top. Right, so here we go. So that's two steps. So that's cheese on the bottom, then the Maryland blue crab on the top. Again, substitute shrimp if you can't find crab. And then you want to put that green onion on top of there. Also, any type of crab is fine. It doesn't have to be Maryland crab. Um, you can find other crab in your store. It could be the Dungeness crab, um, any type of crab that you have. Even imitation crab meat would still be fine inside of this dish. So the next thing we're going to do is take the egg and cream mixture with the spices that Carson mixed up. And we're going to pour that on top of everything. And you pour it evenly around so that it gets a nice even coating throughout. That way when it's baked, it's covered the whole quiche dish. So once again, that's three whole eggs. It's one cup of light cream. You're gonna to add to that a half a teaspoon of the zest of a lemon or the peel of a lemon. You're gonna do a half a teaspoon of regular salt. You're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of the dry mustard powder. And then you're gonna do just a dash of the mace to get that beautiful aroma and that great flavor uh, inside of that. So you see what that's done now that has covered most of it and you can start to see the egg mixture. And then we finish it off 
with the almonds. You can use slivered almonds, you can use sliced almonds. These are sliced almond pieces that I just happen to have in the refrigerator. I kind of keep them as a staple and they're nice to put on all kinds of dishes. So, so here, so almonds obviously are optional. They're great because it gives you that crunch. So, you know, you've got a lot of soft texture with the crab, the cheese, and the egg. So the almonds will give you that beautiful crunch inside of the quiche. But if you don't like nuts, leave them out. It won't hurt it. But like I said, uh, almonds are in, in the recipe here that we're going to call for. I guess you could also substitute other nuts. Uh, I think that probably walnut, chopped walnuts would probably be delicious. If I did, I would do it very, very thinly. But I think, you know, almonds aren't very robust in flavor. They're kind of mild. So I think that's what complements yeah. it. I mean, the other thing you could do is leave them off and you could do variations. And like Carson said, you could put Old Bay on this if you wanted to yeah. and really spice it up. So it's really up to you. It's kind of nice to always take a recipe and then make it your own. So this is Old Bay. Uh, every house in Maryland has a shaker of Old Bay. It's kind of a reddish texture. It's like a, it's a seasoning. It's a little bit of a little bit of salt, a little bit of cayenne pepper, uh, definitely some uh, black pepper inside of there. It's got a little bit of spicy kind of salty goodness. Everybody in Maryland has Old Bay. We put it on vegetables. Uh, we put it on our potatoes. We obviously put it on crab. Um, you can't go wrong with that. But for this peach, it's perfect as it is. You don't have to put any Old Bay on side of it. All right. And now let's go ahead and we'll see. I'll show you guys a little bit close up here what this is going to look like. I'm not going to tilt it because I don't want to spill it, but there you go. That is the beautiful quiche with the almonds on top and the green onions. He doesn't want to spill it because that's Katie and his dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take this home to my wife, Katie, and we're going to have this for dinner uh, later on. So, okay, so we have the oven. The oven is set to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 163 degrees centigrade. The temperature before you go ahead and put the quiche inside of the oven. All right, and then this is going to bake inside of the oven for 45 minutes. So it's going to be uh, three quarters of an hour, 45 minutes, and that's going to come up until just the eggs inside are going to be set um, and they're going to be really beautiful. The house will start to get that beautiful smell as that pastry crust starts to really be a uh, golden brown color and everything comes together. So we, uh, we got up early this morning and we prepared one so that way you get to see what the finished product is gonna look like too. So when you take it out of the oven, you wanna put it onto some sort of a rack so that it cools all the way around and underneath at the same time. So this has been sitting on a rack, so it's time to take it off now. And you want to put the salad behind it. All right, so here we go. So this is the finished quiche. Look at that. I can tilt this one because it's fully cooked. You can see the eggs are totally set inside of there. That crust has a beautiful golden brown uh, color all the way around of it. And it just smells amazing. It's got a little bit of that seafood in it. You can smell the green onion, a little bit of that nutty flavor from the sliced almonds. All right, so here we go. You go ahead. It's Mother's Day. You do the honors. Slice it up. It's Mother's Day. You get to serve me, right? All right. Let's see if there's any questions. I don't see anybody with their hands raised. Um, but if not, we can also read through there. Let's see. Perfect. It looks like we've answered all the questions. That's good. Here we go. Cecilia from Mexico is with us. Hi, Cecilia. Hi, Carlson. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Thanks for joining us again. Welcome back. Oh, thank you very much for all your interesting courses and all the things and stuff that you do. That looks yummy. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's your question today? The question is, have you done it? All this that your mom did today morning? Well, to, for me, it's morning. Yeah, it's have you morning. done it all? Yeah, we've done everything this morning. Yeah, I got so. up really early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, it, have you cooked it? Yeah, we cooked it this morning, actually. Oh. So this has come out of the oven just this morning. We put it in the um, oven about 7.30, I guess, this I, I live in Baltimore, Maryland, so I live down in the city, just on the water. Uh, it's about 25, 30 minutes away from my mom's house. So I got up today really early. I drove up here. Uh, we made our coffee. We put the first one into the oven, uh, and then we sat for a little while, and then we are making the second one here with you live. But here we okay. go. We worked a and little bit, answered some emails. 
will will you be available to do the things that your mom did today morning you by your own absolutely she taught me <laughs> so i love cooking and uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be able to cook and especially family recipes like this one of course have you, how long have you done this recipe Ooh. oh i've been married 40 years um and i think i've been I probably discovered this recipe maybe 35 years ago. Wow. So I think I've been cooking it most of my adult and married life. That's yeah. good. Thank you. All right, Cecilia, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate you calling in today. So Thank here you. we go. I think um, we have everything that's done here. Now we're just going to obviously quiche is great with a beautiful uh, salad on the side. We've just drizzled a little bit of, a, a, a obviously, Italian olive oil, a little bit of lemon on that some uh, fresh cracked salt and pepper. Look at this. Now tell me that is not a dish that you want to serve to your friends and family uh, or the company. So again, what a beautiful brunch with the egg inside of that. Um, I think it looks absolutely fabulous. Should we try it? Sure. Yes, let's try it. This is breakfast. All right, so <laughs> you do the honors. It's Mother's Day. All righty. I haven't made this for a couple of years, actually. Right. Turned out good. Mm. Oh yeah, that's delicious. So obviously you start with that really buttery rich um, pastry crust, and then you get the creaminess of the egg, a little bit of seafood with the crab. But what I really taste is I taste the lemon. Uh, the lemon zest has really come through. It really brightens everything up. You get a little bit of the but cardamom. It's not tart. No, it's not tart at all, but it really Good balances savory. everything. Mm -hmm. And the nuts, I love the nuts because it gives you that crunch uh, inside of your mouth. You just need a mimosa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, get a, we'll pop our champagne and make our mimosas off camera. So, all right. I don't see any other questions that are coming on here with the hands raised, but this has been a real pleasure for me to be cooking with my mom. Happy Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, first kids I've had in a lot of weeks since yeah. the pandemic. We have been social distancing, so I haven't really seen my mom for like six, eight weeks. It's been a long time. So it's, uh, things are starting to become a little bit better now in the United States. So we're happy to get back together. But listen, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today Thank on MLA you. Kitchen. Uh, coming from Bel Air, Maryland with Crab Quiche. Don't forget the recipe is going to be sent to you. All of the ingredients, all of the quantities, and all of the instructions. And you're going to send the pie crust also recipe. The pie crust recipe will come. That's, like I said, the old family pie crust recipe uh, will be sent to you by email. Look, stay tuned for us next week. We've got a whole other slate of webinars. We start on Wednesday, of course, with our webinars for teachers. It's free teacher training courses to all of our friends across the world. We're continuing our English for Special Purposes with our STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We have a chemistry professor from New Jersey who's going to be joining us for that. We're going to be having a really special chit chat club for all of our MLA students. The chit chat club this year is an Olympic athlete. She's a 2018 silver medalist in the sport of bobsled, and she's going to be talking to our students on our chit chat club. Um, this Thursday. And then next Friday, we're back in the kitchen with another great chef in another part of the world. Stay tuned for more information, mlaworld.com slash webinar for all the information or follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. So from our family in our kitchen right here in Bel Air, Maryland, thanks so much for taking a part of your day to uh, join us. We hope you have a great weekend and happy Mother's Day. Thanks for joining us. Bye guys.